I'm here with Dee Forbes, the Director General of RTE. Hello. Hi, Owen. How are you? Good, thank you for your time. In an ever-evolving landscape, this is a five-year strategy with very specific goals. In five years' time, where do you see RTE? I see RTE playing a vital role in the creative economy. I see it as a driver in the creative economy, commissioning and making just great programming. I also hope that RTE will be in a more sustainable place in that we'll be able to plan for the future and we'll be in a cycle of long-term planning because that's the business we're in. And ultimately, I suppose, I really hope that the audience value what we're doing and that the people watching us will recognise and value what we do and recognise that has to be paid for. If you're competing against these new platforms, be it the Facebooks or the Netflix or the Amazons, they don't have the remit to serve Irish public life. Do you try to take them on at their own game or do you focus on the Irish aspect of the culture? Where's the balance? I think the best uh, response from us to the challenges of a Netflix or the Amazons is to really excel at strong Irish-made content. Um, we're never going to have the budgets that the Netflixes, et cetera, have. And they do they do really, really well. But we're not about that. We're about providing Irish audiences with the best Irish content across a range of genres, from kids to drama to documentary to news and current affairs. And I really think that over the last number of years, because of various um, you know, cutbacks, et cetera, we haven't been able to provide our audiences with perhaps the content that we would have liked to. Um, drama is a great case in point where, you know, drama is a wonderful genre of television where you can look at Irish culture and Irish life in all its forms, warts and all. And I think if we were to really increase our drama output, it would be a, a great, um, first of all, response to what's happening in the industry, but also great for our audience. And again, let's remember, this is all about the audience. I saw in the strategy, it said 80% of the online revenue spend goes to Facebook and Google. Talking about the digital lab and getting in the digital space and homes without televisions, 80% of that available money is going elsewhere already. Are we at a serious disadvantage kicking off this strategy? Are we years behind or is there something you can recover quickly? Well, I think the Facebooks and the Googles and the Amazons, you know, they were all set up for a very different reason than we were set up. And I think it's been very easy for them to monetize um, and to make their revenues based on their model. You know, they were set up for that reason only. Um, whereas we're coming from a very different place. And I think, again, you know, you look at our offering, you know, we offer advertisers a, a premium environment. We offer them a quality environment. And that's what our advertising team sell on. Um, you know, absolutely, we're never going to be the provider of the mass audience that, you know, Facebook and Google can in digital space, but we still offer a very, very good environment for those advertisers. So I think that's what we have to concentrate on. You know, our new player, Player 3 launches in, in the first quarter, you know, that is going to be a really, you know, enhanced user experience from a start, uh, from a starting point, and also will be a great um, environment for advertisers. So what we have to do is really just maximise and optimise what we have, and yes, get better and get more opportunities for advertisers to advertise around. But, you know, again, within and remembering, we have a remit to fulfil. That's what we're about. Um, but I do think that commercially, we have still, you know, huge opportunity out there, and we will continue to optimise that, you know, as a secondary to our public service remit. The strategy talks a whole lot about uh, RT's place in the local community with the broader challenges from all these other marketplaces. Where does that sit in the strategy? I think our place in the local communities is hugely important. Um, it's something that we do, you know, I think we do well today, but I think we can do even better. And that is everything from engaging with local communities via supporting the arts, for example, you know, great initiative that we, you know, we offer support to communities all around the country, around various areas, to along with telling local stories. Um, and that is where, again, if you, if you look recently um, on the RT News Now app, they have put a, a regional, regional um, tabs on there. So you can look at Munster, Connacht, Leinster, Dublin, etc., in terms of more local stories. And I think, you know, a lot of stories come into RT every day, particularly in the news front, 
they may not all make the 6-1 or the 9, but that doesn't mean that they don't get a, an airing. This is ORT at its best. It's ORT out and about at the ploughing. It's ORT, you know, talking to its core audience. Um, the Young Scientist, a great opportunity where, you know, ORT is at the heart of the Young Scientist exhibition. And, you know, again, will be engaging with, with, you know, kids and schools from all over the country. So it's very much an important part of what we do and will continue to be. In terms of the, the independent sector and that whole ecosystem, is RT the force it once was? If you look at the last number of years, um, RTE's spend with the independent sector has halved from 80 billion to 40. So that, of course, has, you know, had some consequences in the sector. However, I think with this new strategy, um, we really want to increase our investment again because, you know, reacting to the challenges that we're facing, working with the independent sector is, is vital. Um, you know, we have worked really well with them over the years. Um, you know, we're probably the biggest employer of, um, you know, musicians, actors, etc. in the industry. And, you know, if RTE isn't able to cultivate our talent in conjunction with the independent sector, then there's a problem. Um, so I feel really strongly about that. I think it's a, I think it's a, a real strength in Ireland that we're not maximising, and it's not being maximised because we haven't been able to spend that money. Um, so again, this new strategy with the funding reform that we are aiming for, you know, could change that, and that would be fantastic for the sector. In the strategy, there's there's talk of a digital lab as as part of the strategy to to re-entice or retain young people. Uh, what is the digital lab? What's the vision for it? So a digital lab is the is the name that we're giving to a a space, if you like, um, that our teams can work on developing ideas that are primarily for a younger generation. And by that I mean it could be long form, it could be short form, but it is content that perhaps may never go on um, the linear channels, that it's focused primarily at reaching a younger audience um, through online, the player, et cetera. And that, again, I think is something that, you know, is exciting for our future because, you know, we need to have space for our creatives to think and to think again about the audience. Many broadcasters around the world are doing things like this right now to some, some great success. Now, again, everything won't be an overnight hit. We'll have to work very hard. But again, I think it is when you, when you really focus on an audience and focus on the needs of that audience, I think great stories will come. D Forbes Director General Gurmila Mahagat.